Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna discuss about Oncidium orchids, which are actually not called Oncidium anymore. And the orchid which inspired this video is this lovely first time bloomer, Muleer Oncidium. So we're gonna take a look at it, but also we're gonna talk about a few orchids that have been reclassified a long, long time ago out of the genus Oncidium. And this is because this particular orchid simply reminds me of a lot of orchids which used to be Oncidiums, but are not. I find today's topic quite fun, and if you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post on a regular basis and only videos about orchids, all sorts of orchids. So first of all, the orchid that we have in front of us is a cross. And if you're curious what cross, it is a hematochilum cross with maureen. In the past, the orchid had the name Oncidium, but now it is known as Trichocentrum. And it is a lovely, lovely so-called Muleer Oncidium. The name derives from the shape of its leaves, which look like mule ears, apparently. They are pretty wide and long for the size of the orchid, and also they are thick and fleshy, they're not flimsy. Think actually Psychopsis. If you've ever had a Psychopsis, it's very similar to that. The leaves don't have that rough texture, at least in my opinion, but they come very, very, very close. Another trait that is very similar to Psychopsis orchids is the very, very tiny pseudobulb, but in this case, it is just so tiny we cannot see it. This overall is a tinier orchid than the Psychopsis can be, but again, you can see that we are lacking the pseudobulb. It is here, it's present, it's just super, super tiny. And this overall makes the plant very appealing to me. Now, on the surface, you can see the leaves can have a little bit of mottling. They can have a bit of freckles, again, very similar to Psychopsis orchids, and they tend to appear more in very bright light. Now, when I received this orchid, it had absolutely zero roots. I have it for less than a year, actually, and now it's finally put out a decent root system. The leaves were very shriveled at some point and had a lot of red pigmentation due to the bright light. The pigmentation is going away now. As I pulled it back from the light, this orchid is a highlight orchid, but mine was simply stressed and suffering and she couldn't handle the light. We'll get to care a little later in the video, but again, you can see, I believe it really resembles the Psychopsis orchid, which, what do you know, used to be called a Oncidium. Now, the flower spike arises from next to the pseudobulb, very typical for Oncidiums as well, but other orchids are known to produce this type of spike, and also the spike is very, very long and contains tiny little flowers at the top of it. What does this remind you of? I believe Tolumnia orchids. And yes, yet again, Tolumnias used to be called Oncidiums. Even though they really do not look like Oncidiums, but their flowers, I believe they do. That's why I think they were classified as Oncidiums. So the Muleer Oncidium, in my opinion, is a combination of the two, the Psychopsis, when it comes to foliage and pseudobulbs and so on, and the Tolumnia, when it comes to flowers. The shape of the flowers, again, resembles a lot the Tolumnia. It also resembles the Oncidium, if you think about the twinkles. So I'm guessing that's why people put this orchid under the Oncidium alliance rather than anything else, I think, due to the flowers. Now, speaking about the flowers, you can see they are very, very tiny. I think they're one centimeter across, but they are just the most charming thing ever. So let's get you in a little closer. There we have it, so you can see the shape reminds a little bit of the twinkles. We have the sepals and petals, which have this browny, um, orangey spotting or patterning on a yellow background. Wow, I see things better on my viewfinder than in reality because the flowers are just so tiny. And we also have on the lip a beautiful uh, pattern with a pretty striking yellow at the top and a very dark brown leathery end of the lip. Look at this. It actually has texture. It looks like leather, doesn't it? It actually has little ridges, little wrinkles. It's absolutely fascinating. It's just so tiny, I just need to get closer to it. So on camera, you see it a lot better than I see it in reality, which is fine. The flower simply invites you over to have a better look. Also, you can see the cap here on the pollen is white. It's just a very, very beautiful flower. From the profile, we can see that some of the sepals, I think, yes, those are the sepals, are pulled back. But the upper sepal 
is straight. Now these little flowers have no fragrance, they actually smell like nothingness. Um, so that can be a good thing because colors like these suggest a very foul smell if we think about the bulbophyllums. So I think I'm happy it doesn't really have a fragrance. But take a look what's happening here in the center. I decided to film this orchid today because next to it I found a fallen flower. This is the first flower that opened. And if you look in the center, you can see a lot of buds forming. They were not here about a week ago when it started to first open its flowers. Okay, maybe not a week ago, two weeks ago. Flowers are not very long lived if you take them individually, maybe two weeks or so, but the orchid, I think, is a sort of sequential bloomer. It continuously produces buds from the top. How long it will do this? I'm not entirely sure. This is the only Mueller Oncidium in my collection, I have to say. But I just find it so dainty, so fascinating that I am interested in uh, having more. Um, so this is quite a nice feature. If it is a sequential bloomer, it will overall extend the blooming time. So far it has been open for about two weeks. So already the bloom time is pretty good. Generally Oncidiums have a short blooming time if you take flowers individually, but overall the show can last for a month or even more. Care-wise, I actually treat this orchid more like a Cattleya than an Oncidium. Uh, I read about it when I received it and the article suggests that it wants high light, higher than Oncidiums generally. And while I had that little issue with the pigmentation, right now she is getting more adjusted to the high light. And the fact that it bloomed, that's a good sign considering she was sick. So I am keeping her in bright filtered sunlight. I don't think it is as extreme as the Cattleyas. She is further back in the shelf, but definitely she's receiving a little bit more light than my Sherry Babies and Twinkles. As you can see, she is spotted in semi-hydroponics and took to it really, really well. Articles suggest that this orchid is actually more like a tolumnia in the sense that it likes to dry out in between waterings and have that you know drying out but you know that rules are different when it comes to organic medium i'm using an organic so far so good um the root system actually formed pretty pretty fast and it looks to be okay so so far this orchid does okay for me in my pretty hot climate in semi hydroponics but it's now one of those orchids that I keep my eye on to be super moist. These are actually the first roots that appeared after I received the orchid and considering the stress, you know, I'm still evaluating the situation, but so far I think she is doing okay in semi-hydroponics for me and the extra moisture actually helped it develop a good root system. Temperature wise, she receives what everybody receives. I do live in a subtropical climate. I have very mild winters and very hot summers. I control my temperature in the grow room, but overall the situation is pretty warm or at least intermediate to warm. And as far as I read, this orchid can handle very well um, hot temperatures. So she's not a cool grower, which is nice. Growth rate, it doesn't appear to be very fast. Again, think about Psychopsis. They produce about one pseudobulb, let's say, per year, although that pseudobulb developed pretty, pretty fast, but it took its time to produce the flower spike, to bloom and so on. So overall, I do think it produces one pseudobulb per direction of growth per year, while other Oncidiums obviously can grow faster than that. So I wouldn't call this orchid a fast grower. So that's about it on my little mule deer Oncidium here. I know I still call it an Oncidium and this is not correct. It depends on the setting. I'm not in a formal setting right now, so I can call it whatever. Since we're on the topic though, let's take the Psychopsis, which is a pretty iconic former Oncidium orchid. As I was saying, it looks very much like the mule deer Oncidium, but it's a lot bigger, the pseudobulbs are bigger, and flowering is different. The Psychopsis orchids produce a flower spike next to the pseudobulb, just like the Mueller Oncidium we saw today, but on top we only have one flower at a time, although I think I saw two in some cases, I think the spikes can actually branch out a little bit, but the point is, flowers open sequentially. You'll have three weeks of one of the flowers open and then it will fade and a new bud on top of it will be formed. So pretty much the flower spike continues growing and blooms sequentially throughout the year. But you can see how it actually is different from the Mueller Oncidium and also from the other Oncidiums in general. 
And when it comes to tolumnias, which used to be called equitant oncidiums, I think the difference is even bigger. Yes, the flowers look very, very much like an oncidium, like a twinkle, right? Uh, yeah, well, they're not oncidiums. Just look at those fans. Where are the pseudobulbs? And oncidiums are known to have pseudobulbs. The Tolumnia orchids have fans, more like Paphiopetalum orchids, and even though they look like Neophonicias, they're not. Neophonicias are monopodials. Slightly confusing here if we just look at things from what our eyes can see. But actually, no, Tolumnias are sympodials, they do have a rhizome, but they have totally different growth than Oncidiums. Also, Tolumnias require a lot of light. They like Vanda type of light. They also are a little bit finicky about their root system. If you manage to destroy it, it's gonna take a little bit for them to recuperate, but they do. They're pretty hardy orchids in my opinion, and if you get the care correct, I think you'll do great with them. Just check my care video down below. So alrighty guys, this is about it on Oncidiums today. Sadly, I don't have my Psychopsis anymore. I might get it in the future, but I do have the Tolumnias. And as far as the Mueller Oncidium goes, it's just such a charming little orchid. I don't think it's a true miniature, but it is indeed pretty tiny so far. And as you can see, the flowers are really, really tiny. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, hope you've enjoyed it, you know the drill, if you did, give it a thumbs up, if you hated it, give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and turn on all notifications if you'd like YouTube to notify you every time I post something. And with that said, I'll see you all next time, bye!